Vocabulary development in early childhood is based on three pillars, the quantity of language, the quality of language, and the types of interactions that the kids have. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the quantity of language and what you can do to speak more to your kids. So if you're a parent or a teacher of little ones, if you teach English as a foreign language to children, then you won't want to miss it, so stick around. Hi, I'm Adriana, the creator of the English is Fun Method. Welcome to my channel where you could find tips and tricks for teaching English to young children. Children know a lot about language even before they start speaking, just from listening. They are very much tuned in to the prosody of language. Prosody is all about tempo, cadence. It's kind of the music of language. In fact, you've probably guessed that I'm American and not British. At birth, babies prefer the prosody of the language they heard in the womb. But sensitivity to prosody is not enough to learn a language. In fact, learning a language is a process that involves five steps. The first step is phonological development, the knowledge of the system of sounds in the language. Um, phonemes are the most elementary unit of sound, and the phoneme b is very different from the phoneme k. That's why bat is different from cat. The smallest unit of meaning, however, is a morpheme. And semantic development is all about how we put morphemes together. Take the word dogs. It's composed of two morphemes. One is dog, which is the morpheme for a nice fluffy animal. And the other is the final S which implies that we are talking about more than one dog. Words have to be combined in order for us to express an idea, but only some combinations actually work. In fact, this is called syntactic development, and syntax is about the rules of language. Now, in English, we have rules that maybe are different from other languages. For example, word order. Susan loves John is not the same as John loves Susan. After syntactic development comes pragmatic development, which is understanding how language is used. Um, tone, for example, can change the meaning of a sentence. When my mother used to say, would you please lower your voice? That wasn't a yes or no question. That was actually a command, and that's what pragmatics is all about. And finally, we have metalinguistic knowledge of language, which is understanding that the sounds that we hear are actually a code of communicating. When a small baby hears a language that they don't know, all they hear is a bunch of sounds. But as we get older, we become aware of what language is. We realize that language has rules, that sounds are actually words, that are sentences that become paragraphs. And basically, when we hear a language that we don't know, we realize that it's a language and it's not just somebody babbling. It takes about five years to master these steps. And believe it or not, a first grader's um, use of their native language is about as grammatically correct as a person who's starting university. Um, of course, the first grader is going to have um, a lower vocabulary. Um, they are going to use less sophisticated um, combinations of words. But the basic structure is already there, and it's the exact same one. You must have received your native language within the first few years of life, within those first five years. Um, there is this critical period. If you don't learn language within those years, you will probably never learn language or never um, be proficient in language, shall we say. However, when it comes to learning a second language, that window is actually pushed up. And that window is now at around age seven, although the earlier you learn a language, the better it seems to be. The implications are incredible for, for um, education because it means that we need to teach children a second language before they hit puberty, before they're in their teens. Many countries are waiting far too long to start teaching a second language. If you're a teacher of English as a foreign language and you teach kids and you're interested in learning more about my method, I'll just drop the link in the description box below. But besides just talking to your kids, which is obvious and it comes quite natural, here are some tips that you can consciously use to increase their, your children's vocabulary. 
The first tip is to use new words at the end of a sentence. Children focus more on the end of sentences uh, than at the beginning. So if you want to teach a word like lasagna, for example, don't say something like, we're going to have lasagna for lunch today. Say, for lunch today, we're having lasagna. Play naming games. Find the telephone. Where's daddy? Show me the book. Those types of things expand upon their sentences. Even though you know that the words no bed mean I don't want to go to bed, expand upon that and say, oh, you don't want to go to bed. And another really important thing you want to remember when you're teaching your children to speak, especially if you're teaching your child a second language, um, is to use their name. We recognize our name as early as four and a half months of age. So when children hear just sounds in a different language, they are just sounds. But when they hear their name used amidst those sounds, they realize that those sounds are a way of communicating, a code, if you wish, a new language. If you want to learn more about vocabulary development in early childhood, click on one of the videos that's on your screen right now. And if they're not up yet, make sure to subscribe and click notifications because they will be real soon. Thanks for watching.